In this video, we're going to take a look at the Marmalade 5 challenge from the Hamcon CTF 2023. This was the first challenge that I solved last night when the CTF started and I thought it would be a good fit for the Integrity channel because we've been doing a lot of JWD videos recently. So I have the challenge started at the moment and the description says enjoy some of our delicious homemade marmalade. We've got a site to connect to, there's no source code or anything so let's go and take a look at it. Alright so it asks us to choose a username, the first thing I tried here was to put in admin and it says login as admin has been disabled so let's choose a different username maybe you'll try some payload in there like sql injection or something like that but i just put in a cat and then it says only the admin can see the flag so first thing i did then was go into the developer tools and see what cookies we've got and we'll notice that we've got this token which is in the jwt format let me copy this over to jwt.io if you didn't know what the format was, this is basically two base64 encoded strings, URL safe base64 encoded should I say. The first part is the header which has the algorithm in it, MD5 HMAC. The second part is the payload which has the username cat and then the last part is the signature. So this is all signed using some kind of secret key using this algorithm and it means that if we try to change this username to admin, this signature is not going to be verified. So we've been using the JWT tool quite a lot in the port swigger labs. Let's go and take a look at that. If we put in here JWT tool and then the token and it decodes that, gives us all the information. We can do dash H to get a list of our options. One of which is to crack the HMAC SHA token. We've also got some exploits here. So this was the first thing that I tried was to do dash X and then we can do like a null signature or we can set the alg to non. And if we do A, it'll come back with four different tokens, each with alg set to non with different case sensitivity. So it's worth trying all of these, basically. And we can do the same thing again for the other attack. But let's just try and take a copy of this and go back to the website. We will replace the cookie that we have and then refresh the page. And we get this message back saying, invalid algorithm, we only accept tokens signed with our MD5 HMAC algorithm using the secret. And then it's given you the first... 11 characters of the secret so there's five missing we know that it's 16 characters long it looks like it's all lowercase letters with no numbers or uppercase characters so perhaps we just need to brute force the last five characters of this that shouldn't be too difficult to do we don't need to do this against the web server because we have a jwt and we can just test this locally so just out of interest, what if we took this over to the JWT tool? We need to work out something to brute force those characters at the end, but let's just do this again. We'll try to crack it and then we need to provide a password. I'm going to just put in the password as this for now. Let's just say the last five characters are A's. Just want to see whether it works, but it doesn't. We get this message saying the HMAC SHA is the only supported algorithm. We also saw how we can use Hashcat in the port swigger labs so let's do hashcat dash h for the help menu grep case insensitive and look for the jwt mode to see what we need to set it to it's 16500 so we can do hashcat and then we'll set the mode 16500 we can put in our token and then again we need to basically set this up let me actually let's grab this we don't need the a's this time because with hashcat we can basically say that we have a rule, so you can do like question mark L, and we'll do that five times. So we're basically saying we know that the start of the key is this, and then we want you to brute force five lowercase characters after that. Hit enter, but we get back this message saying no file or directory. Maybe that's because I need to, I think I need to set the mode to three. But yeah, we get this message back saying no hashes loaded, token length exception, and I'm assuming it's basically because it doesn't support this type of hashing algorithm. So if you've been following along with the port swigger series we're doing, in each of the JWT labs, we first look at how to solve it with a custom Python script. Then we look at how to solve it with some burp extensions like the JWT editor, JSON web tokens. They're not going to be any good for us here because they're not going to have that algorithm either. But we can also look at the... Python script. So I basically did that. I used ChatGPT to get a bit of a template going and then I created a crack.py which is going to go through and brute force this. So let's take a look at that. First thing we need to do here is just paste in our token. So I'm going to paste that there and save it. 
And then we've got a verify JWT function. Let's go down to the bottom here where the script starts. So we've got a char set. We think it's going to be lowercase letters because that's what all the first 11 characters were. And we know that we've got five asterisks. So that's how many characters we need to brute force. The key starts with the characters that we've been given. So we're basically saying we want to loop through and get every possible variation of those five different characters. And then we want to verify the JWT. We send in the token along with what we know the start of the key is and then what the end of the key might be. And that basically calls this function where it's going to split up the token into the header, the payload, the signature. It's going to add the header and the payload back together. That was kind of unnecessary. And then it's going to convert the signing input. So that's our header and our payload. It's going to convert that. It's going to get the key bytes, so the potential key. It's basically going to hash this using the HMAC MD5 algorithm. And then it's going to calculate the signature. It's going to try to decode it. And then it's going to compare it and say, does the decoded signature equal the calculated signature? So yeah, we're essentially just taking the same data. This is the same header, the same payload. And we're just going through and trying to generate every possible signature based on the characters that we have. So every possible signature is these characters to begin with, and then five not random characters, but five sequential characters until we get one where the signature that we generate is the same as this. And then we know that we've obviously used the same secret key in order to generate the signature. And once that happens, it'll basically just print out the key and that's it. Just a quick detour for anybody who's not sure what this hashing algorithm is. So the HMAC MD5 is a keyed hash algorithm. It's constructed from the MD5 hash function and the HMAC algorithm. So it takes in a secret key and the algorithm, which is in this case the MD5, and then uses this HMAC process, which mixes in the secret key with the message data, hashes the result with a hash function, which is MD5, and then mixes that with the secret key again, then applies the hash function a second time. The output hash is 128 bits in length. So that's right here. We have our HMAC and we're generating it using the key bytes, the input data, and the MD5 algorithm and the output will be our message authentication code or our MAC code. Okay, I think that's all good. Let's try and run the script and see what happens. All right, that took about 45 seconds, but I skipped through it to save you some time and we got back our key. This script could have been made a bit more efficient. I mean, at the moment, we don't really need to be splitting these up every time. We could just be doing that once and then looping over whenever it gets to actually just sign in again, the header and the payload. It probably won't save that much time, but we could save a little bit. I'm sure there's some other efficiency changes you could make as well. But anyway, we've got our secret key. I already have this in the Forge PY script, so I'm just going to paste the JWT here as well. And you could do this all in one. So really, once you find the correct key, instead of printing it out, you could just forge a token here and then print it. You could even just forge a token and then make a request directly to the challenge page and get back the flag. But I just created a new script, so we put in our JWT, we get our full key, and then we're doing the same sort of thing again. We're splitting this up, so we've got our header, our payload, our signature. We're going to decode it. We're going to replace the username claim in the payload, so it's username cat to begin with. We're changing it to username admin. You could just replace cat with admin here, but we're replacing the whole thing. And then we're going to re-encode that, and then we're going to sign it. So we need to add this together. Whenever you sign in a JWT, it's the header appended to the payload, both base64 URL safe encoded, separated by a dot, and then it's signed with the HMAC algorithm, in this case MD5, and the key bytes, there we go, we generate our hash, we are then getting our encoded signature, and we just need to replace this. So again, because I use ChatGPT to do a lot of this, some things probably aren't done in the best way, um, but I basically just did this to make sure it was URL safe and then we build it back together so yeah signature generated from the header and the payload using this hmac algorithm and the key that we discovered and then we just put it all back together we get our token and that should be it let's try and do python forge we get a modified token and then take a copy of this we can go and put it into our cookies or we can go and put it in like burp or pizza or something wherever you want to place it, it's fine refresh the page and then we get through to the admin page which has our flag so yeah i thought this was a pretty cool challenge it was the first one that i opened whenever the ctf started i think i got the third or the fourth solve on it and i'll be putting some more of the web challenge videos onto my channel CryptoCat. 
I'm not too sure how many I'll get through or how many I'll get time to record and edit for the end of the CTF, but I'll try and make a video anyway. I made one for the 2022 Nahamcon CTF, so I want to try and make something anyway. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.